on the BBC this morning talking about giving up smoking. Uh, next Tuesday is not only the 1st of October, it's also the 1st of Stoptober. So we're talking this morning about giving up smoking. Uh, how did you give up smoking? What worked? What didn't? What are the... Um, uh, the techniques that people will often try is uh, using a hypnotherapist. Uh, Lizette Offley is a cognitive hypnotherapist from uh, Henley who's helped smokers give up. Uh, morning to you, Lizette. Morning, Phil. Uh, what is it like helping smokers to quit? <laughs> What's it like? Well, it's quite rewarding, obviously. Especially obviously. when people have tried umpteen times to quit on their own. And uh, do they always, is, is, it, is it quite plain sailing? Do you sort of just snap your fingers and say, woof, there you are, you're no longer <laughs> a smoker? That would be nice, wouldn't it? I can't actually make anybody do anything, but I can help them leave me with a choice. I mean, I have a choice. Every day I could choose to smoke or not smoke. Naturally, I choose not to smoke. But if I wanted to, there's nothing stopping me lighting up. But people who, who end up seeing me have tried so many times to stop smoking, they, they don't seem to be able to do that. They don't have the choice. They, they believe that they have no choice but to smoke. That's right. They want to stop, and yet here they are still smoking. It doesn't seem to happen for them. But that's, but that's obvious to me because the smoking is there to attempt to fulfill a need. So it's no good somebody snapping their fingers and taking the cigarettes away because that need is still there needing to be fulfilled. So what I do is I help people to go on an unconscious search for something that's even better, much healthier for them that will fulfill that need. Then, of course, they don't need the cigarettes anymore, and that will naturally, that habit will just naturally drop away. And what sort of things do, do, do they end up seeking? Because as soon as you said that, you, you have to search in your mind for something that, that is better for you. I'm thinking exercise and running, but yeah, I can't right. stand using, all that. That's using your conscious, logical mind. Ah. That's not how it works. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know what the solution will be for my client. My client doesn't know either. If they knew that, they wouldn't be seeing me. And so what if it was something pleasurable, like, um, like food or sex? Well, it depends, doesn't it, whether that's a healthier alternative. I won't let my clients leave uh, with, with a, an unhealthy alternative. How is that going to serve them? Oh, OK. So but but none, of this, none of this is conscious. When they leave me, they, they feel positive. They feel as though they have a choice. But it's up to them to go away and do something positive with that. So, so they, 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 they leave you not actually... Uh, aware of the, the, um, the thing that they have chosen. That's right. Well, oh. Not necessarily, by any means. But they will contact me a week later and say, hey, you never guess what. And they're right. I would never have guessed. But they'll come back saying that, that so-and-so has happened. And, and in that process, they've realised they've not even thought about smoking. They've oh. gone a week without even thinking about it. So what sort of things do people uh, come up with then? What sort of um, healthy alternatives do their subconsciouses well, actually, Pick the, up sorts for them. Of things, the sorts of things that you've been talking about, and it might be um, relationships as well, dealing with something that's bothering them. It might be a different attitude at work. Uh, very often people smoke um, in response to stress, but that's not necessarily what's holding it in place. It would be some unconscious connection. Uh, I, could, I could talk about this for hours. I know we don't have hours right now. So what, if I came to you as a smoker... Uh -huh. Um, with my fingers all yellow and, 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 and smelling a cigarette <laughs> and, yeah. and, and saying to you, OK, so I've smoked. Uh, I've spoken to someone just now who said he was, sm he was up to 90 a day. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm aware that this is doing me in, so I really ought to um, yeah. get rid of it. Um, what would you do? How, how, how can you help me? Everything I do comes under the umbrella of cognitive hypnotherapy, which includes many brief therapies. Uh, OK, so it's not, just, it's, not just hyp it's not just hypnosis, it's cognitive hypnotherapy. That's right, yes. And which means what? Which means that I have a lot of training and a lot of experience. It means that I have a, a whole pack of tools that I can use to help people very quickly. I can get to the root of the issue and work with their unconscious mind in the area that's going to make the biggest difference the fastest. Do people who smoke therefore necessarily have some problem associated we've with all smoking? Got, we've all got challenges, haven't we? We've all got things we've got mm. to deal with every day. We've just all of us got different ways of dealing with them. All right. We've all got things that we do to help us feel better. Sometimes we pick the phone up and have a long chat with a girlfriend. Sometimes we'll go shopping. Sometimes we'll have a flutter on the horses. I mean, some of these things that I'm mentioning 
will will potentially lead to bigger problems. You might end up spending too much money on the credit card on a regular basis. Mm. One flutter might lead to, you know, the ups and downs of a gambling problem. That's why it's important to help the unconscious mind go search for its own solution that's a healthier solution than the current one. Otherwise, people can, and, and it does happen, people can shift one addiction for another. Do you do people leave you always um, sorted, or do you, do, you, do, do, do they lapse? Well, the funny thing is that sometimes people will report to me that nothing, you know, didn't make any difference, and then then a few days later or a week later, their pattern shifts. What I do try, to, and so so they get their success, but not how they thought they were going to get their success. Oh, right. What I do try and do is filter out by by talking to them at length on the phone before they arrive. I try very hard to identify and to block people who are just going to use me to prove to their spouse that That nothing is going to... Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Do people do that, then? Um, I'm afraid so, especially with addictions. Yes. Because someone has nagged them into it. Well, yes course for all the right reasons they're concerned about them but if you think about it they're afraid that i'm going to snap my fingers and take the cigarettes away and they know jolly well deep inside that they need the smoking on some level they need it what they don't appreciate of course is that when they're ready to make the difference i can help them leave with a choice so those are people that having spoken to them on for a long time on the phone you would say don't bother coming oh absolutely Absolutely, it's a two-way thing. They can decide whether I sound like the right person to them, and I can also decide whether they sound like the right sort of person to actually do the job. I I can't make them do it. They're the ones who have to do all the work. But then they they get to turn around to their spouse and say, there, you see, even even the hypnotherapist there says, I can't be helped. Yeah. Well, you don't care because it's not your patient. I didn't quite catch what, where you're going with that. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch what you're saying. No, I'm just, I'm just intrigued by the fact that, that, that you can turn around to a patient uh, and say, do you know what? No, 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 no. But then they go around, they are then able to take that rejection and say to their partner who has right. pushed them no, into I'm it. Just, I, I get your drift now, but I'm, I'm, I would have thought that the partner's not going to leave it there. And, and we think of them as um, clients, actually, not patients, because I'm mm-hmm. not medically trained at all. So okay. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Um, but th- their partner might well send them to, you know, to, to make a phone call to somebody else who may well take them on. But, you know, I emphasize again, it's got to be down to the individual. Whatever it is they come to me for help with, it's got to be when they're ready to, to do whatever it takes. With a bit of help from me, they can make the difference that they couldn't make on their own. And actually, they don't have to come and see me, although that's a lovely thing to do. Um, in my Grand Designs Riverside practice, uh, but I have, I have self-help programs. Fully right. downloadable programs on my website, soundspositive.com. So, however it's appropriate, you can do people it. get the help that they need when they're ready for it. Have you ever smoked? I smoked once up a tree when I was eight. <laughs> and I, to be honest, I didn't think much of it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to talk to you, Lizette. You too, Phil. Lizette Offley there is a cognitive hypnotherapist from Henley. She's helped smokers give up. Uh, but don't ring her. If you're just being nagged into it, because she'll, she'll likely tell you to, to send you off with a flea in your ear. I like that. I like that. I like that cut of her jib.